Welcome to VR Sim Pilots Microsoft Flight Simulator VR Settings Guide. So lots of people have been asking on the live streams and in the comments about, um, about how I'm getting such smooth VR performance out of my Quest 2 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I have um, I, I wanted to take some time to put together a video that shows um, you know what I'm using to get such an amazing and uh, an immersive experience. Um, so first of all, if you are interested in VR in Flight Simulator, or um, or if you just enjoy seeing how amazing VR can be, um, hit the subscribe button uh, down there in the lower right. Um, I've got lots of videos up there, uh, previous live streams and, and recordings, just showing and showcasing VR and Flight Simulator. So. Um, Please uh, go ahead and check some of those out too on the channel. Uh, I also do uh, several live streams a week uh, just in different aircraft uh, to different places and uh, honestly it's just a lot of fun. Usually we get a lot of people in chat uh, along for each flight and it really is uh, its just a good time to come along and hang out in uh, some VR flights. So I mean as you can see in this video here I, um, I'm getting some really smooth performance with no stutters and uh, it, it just feels natural in VR the way um, the way I move my head the way the controls work no jerkiness no stuttering um, now I, I spent a few weeks tuning my setup to run this smooth so I, I really just wanted to share some of the settings that I have dialed in to get this level of immersion um, so maybe you don't have to spend as much time as I did I mean it, it really does feel like you're sitting in an aircraft and and with uh, with Flight Simulator's amazing visuals, it, it, it really does feel like the real thing. So today, we're just going to go over some of the settings I use, and these aren't the definitive be-all, end-all settings, because everybody's setup is, is different, of course. But maybe this can serve as a starting point on, on which you can tweak settings and, and build on it and, um, and maybe get the same performance. Um, I've, I've just been really getting such you know great performance out of Flight Simulator with VR and the SU-10 beta. So, um, so let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about hardware. In terms of my PC build, I've got a pretty pretty good PC running right now. I'm running an i9 9900K overclocked to 5 gigahertz, which runs pretty cool with my uh, my custom cooling setup. For a GPU, I've got an Asus RTX 3080 Ti, just stock, no overclock on that. And I my NVIDIA settings are, are pretty much standard, except I have the power management mode set to prefer maximum performance. And I have uh, 32 uh, gigs of DDR4 3200 RAM. Now I'm running an Oculus Quest 2 off of all this hardware. So that's my, that's what I'm using for my, uh, for my headset. And in terms of peripherals, um, I'll show you a picture here of my uh, home cockpit setup for VR and don't laugh at the mess, but uh, this is what I'm using to actually fly in VR. I've got a honeycomb yoke which sits on top of a, a custom modified wheel stand pro with the Satec rudder pedals down there. On the side is the Thrustmaster TM1600 and on the right is the TM1600 throttle turned around backwards and it's attached to that old honeycomb yoke box. So don't laugh, but it works and it doesn't matter in VR because you can't see it anyway. So that's what I'm running. Uh, that's what I'm using to run um, Flight Simulator in, uh, in VR. So now let's talk about Microsoft Flight Simulator options. So here I am just in the general options tab in the graphics menu. And you can see the settings there. I'm using TAA, I'm not using DLSS. 100 for render scaling, 100 sharpening, reprojection mode off. World scale is 100. Um, global rendering quality is blank. I think that's an SU-10 bug, but it's not set to, uh, to one of the standard uh, presets. Um, Terrain LOD is 100, uh, off-screen pre-caching ultra, terrain vector data medium, buildings medium, trees medium, grass and bushes medium, and objects LOD is, uh, is set to 100. And continuing on here, volumetric clouds are high. I, I can't tell the difference between high and ultra in VR, and it just it, it hurts frames a little bit too much for me. 
Texture resolu resolution is high. Yeah. Anisotropic filtering, hard to say that word, is uh, eight times texture super sampling. Eight by eight texture synthesis is high. Water waves low. Shadow maps 768. Terrain shadows 512. Contact shadows are off. Windshield effects are ultra. And this is one of the settings you need to get reflections on the windscreen, which I prefer. Ambient occlusion is off. Cube map reflections off. And remarked reflections are low. And to uh, round it out here, light shafts are off, bloom is off, and cockpit, I'm sorry, bloom is on. Glass cockpit refresh rate is high. So let's move on then to the just the traffic settings because this does affect uh, VR performance a little bit. I'm not going to read these. You can, you can see <laughs> as you want. Um, I guess the most important, I, I mean, I have... Um, I have AI aircraft off, so I just have traffic type and traffic nameplates off anyway. And then the densities are, are set kind of medium, um, you know, except the aircraft density is set low. And then uh, to kind of round this out here, you can see I've got the AI traffic off, multiplayer off, multiplayer aircraft close proximity off, and then traffic variety. Yeah, I, that's ultra, but I don't think it takes any, I don't think it has an effect since I don't have any uh, AI traffic. I'm using the, I think it's the AIG uh, model matching for uh, for VATSIM, and I pretty much only fly on VATSIM. So in terms of data, um, you can uh, you can see this, I've got, you know, online functionality on with, uh, with Bing data streaming. Um, Real traffic is off. Live weather definitely is on. Multiplayer is off because I only play on I, I only fly on Batsim. Um, and then you can see the rest of uh, of these settings here. Um, uh, rolling cache it's set to 20 gigs. Unlimited bandwidth. And then in terms, uh, okay, so one one important thing here that I've modified, if you if you go into the uh, user config.opt file, um, modifying the eye adaptation really helps with for me it helps with the ground, um, just uh, remove some of the washed out effect that you get with the with the ground, um, and then sharpen is uh, is set to zero. So those are the light simulator settings themselves, plus that user config uh, file that you'll want to modify. But, and by the way, you need to modify the section in user config.opt that's in the, it's in the VR section. So basically scroll all the way down to the bottom and, um, and, and modify the post-process section as you can see on the screen there. Um, it, it's the one at the bottom though. Don't, uh, don't modify the one at the top. That's for uh, PC only. Now let's talk about the Oculus uh, app settings. These are settings, they're not, they're not set in the Quest itself. It's, uh, you need to set these in the Oculus app. Um, you know, you need to run this as a, as a PC VR application. You can't just run it native on the Quest, obviously. So these, um, these are set in the app itself. And, you know, I run mine at 72 Hertz. And, um, and as you can see, I mean, it's pretty simple. I've just got the render resolution slid all the way to the right. And for me, that provides the, um, that provides just the best clarity and it still gives great performance. So I just, I don't see a need to, to lower the render resolution. So that is how I have my Oculus Quest set up. Um, the other thing that I do, the only other, um, the only other thing I do with the Quest, I, I used to use the Oculus Tray tool, but I, I don't use it anymore. I, I use the debug tool. And the only thing that I have, uh, actually I actually have a few things set in the debug tool. Um, asynchronous space warp, I have just a force uh, 45 FPS. It actually forces 36, which is half of my refresh rate. So that works out well. And distortion curvature is low. Encode resolution width 3664. Encode bit rate is 500. And link sharpening is enabled. So I, ha I only change the settings that I just mentioned. I don't mess with any of the other settings there and, and it runs fine. So I don't use any reprojection. I have ASW disabled. I'm just forcing 36, uh, well, it's 
the settings 445, but it forces half of the refresh rate of my Quest 2. And finally, I um, just want to talk about the OpenXR Toolkit settings. This isn't a tutorial on installing OpenXR Toolkit or um, or even really how to use it. I, I highly recommend if you are using VR in Flight Simulator, go check out OpenXR Toolkit. There are tons of tutorials out there, um, you know, including how to install it and set it up and what it does. Um, so go go check that out, and then you know, if you want to try my settings, that's sort of the purpose of this. So just to go over a couple of the tabs, the um, so for the performance tab in OpenXR Toolkit, um, I've got upscaling set to FSR, anamorphics off, size is 90%, uh, sharpness 100%, mit map bias conservative, FFR is set to the quality uh, preset with a uh, wide pattern. And for the appearance menu, um, I don't really do anything here. I just post processing is off and world scale is set to 100%. Inputs, I have shaking reduction set to minus 60%. Um, I just, I, I think this smooths things out a little bit. You can play with this setting if you want. Again, read up on all of these settings just so that you know uh, exactly what you're changing here. The system tab, I... Actually, I don't think I have anything adjusted here either. These are, I think this is pretty much out of the box settings here. No override resolution, the colors are standard, uh, FOV is simple, zoom is, is one times, so uh, nothing really changed there. And then on the menu setting, I also have, uh, I have nothing changed on the, on the menu tab as well. So most of the changes are in that first tab in the performance tab. So that's it. Those are the settings that I'm using to get the performance that I'm getting in VR with Flight Simulator. I really hope this helped to at least get you started with VR or maybe tweak some of the settings that will get you to that performance that you're looking for. And don't forget, I've got tons of content showing off VR and Microsoft Flight Simulator up on the channel. And if this helped, please uh, hit the like button and please hit subscribe as you know it really helps the channel out and it, it's going to help you out too. You're going to get notified of live streams. And like I said, I, I do several live streams a week and they're a ton of fun. We get lots of people in chat and uh, it's just a lot of fun seeing VR and Flight Simulator. It's really immersive and I think uh, I think the live streams are actually just they're fun to do and I think they're fun to watch. So, you know, my, my goal here is just to get as many people as possible to see how immersive VR is in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, you know, and to help people out who might be struggling getting their systems tuned for smooth performance. So uh, thanks for watching.